stress, depression, and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Wellness Center has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. They get a chance to know that somebody's on their team. We think nobody else feels the pain that we feel. We feel like I'm the only one, but that is so untrue. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. Working through my problems and, and seeing that I'm not the only one that has to cope has really brought me to a place where now it's okay to talk about it. Because if you keep stuff to yourself, you, know, you, you can't overcome. We all need one another. Team Wellness Center, you are not alone. We all came into this program uh, with so much trauma in our background that we really thought that we were foster youth and that consumed our identity altogether. But Mr. Arboker really wanted us to get outside of that way of thinking that we're simply foster youth. That that is a part of our experience and it makes us part of who we are, but it, it's also a part of our purpose and we have so much more to do in our lives and in, in this world that we're not just foster youth. Welcome to My Healthy Mind. I'm Elizabeth Atkins. When a child in foster care reaches 18, in most cases, they're no longer eligible to remain in the program and receive its benefits. And sadly, what often happens is that they age out of the program and into crime, substance abuse, homelessness, prison, and even early death. The statistics are daunting, but they're not insurmountable. With us today is a man who not only beat the stats himself, but has piloted a program to help other young people successfully age out of foster care and into the rest of their lives. Marcel Arbuckle, welcome back to My Healthy Mind. Thank you. You first appeared on our show in November of 2016 when you shared your own harrowing story of being abandoned at age two, along with your brothers who were three and four, on the steps of the city courthouse. And you were left there by your parents who said they were going to get ice cream, but never returned. That's correct. And uh, we were fortunate that the person that discovered us there happened to be a social worker that took us to uh, what is now called Child Protective Services. We were placed in uh, foster care. And fortunately for us, uh, at least for my brother and I, that one that was uh, four year, three years old and myself, we were placed in a home with uh, very loving uh, parents who uh, raised us as their own children. Uh, they were individuals that had uh, migrated to the north from the south and therefore uh, were not well educated, but they knew the value of education and they knew that that was our ticket to succeed and to success in life and uh, they really stressed it. And I was very fortunate to uh, be able to graduate from high school and uh, receive an academic scholarship to attend Indiana University. And um, it was during the period of the Vietnam War, so it was a big decision as to whether or not I wanted to go to college or uh, go to the military, but I did choose to go to college. Uh, we had uh, at our church, which uh, we were very uh, spiritual minded family and uh, there were guys that had gone away to college and came back and were uh, sharing their experience with the church and everyone was so proud of them and, and I wanted to feel that same exhilaration uh, and have everyone proud of me so I chose to go to Indiana University and uh, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. And you yourself have said that your experience in foster care was anything but typical. That's absolutely true. Uh, our, our foster parents were very loving individuals that uh, cared for us tremendously. Uh, they, as I indicated, uh, really stressed education and uh, they really stressed uh, spirituality. And uh, the black church was uh, very instrumental in uh, motivating us to want to seek a higher education and wanting us to move forward in our lives. And at age 18, 
you aged out of the foster care system. That's correct. And fortunately for me, I was able to transition out of uh, the foster care system into college and then transition from there into a career with Ford Motor Company. Uh, but I saw so many young people in my same situation uh, that transition out of college and transi or transition out of foster care and transition into trouble. In fact, our research has demonstrated that 65% of the boys that transition out of foster care transition into prison. 45% of the young women that transition out of foster care transition into homelessness, substance abuse, prostitution. And uh, <clears throat> only two to 5% now have my story of being able to transition out of uh, foster care in high school and transition into college. Lots of effort have been made to change those statistics. So as you were having your experience, others who aged out weren't so lucky. Absolutely, and uh, the problem was that one day you're in, the next day you're out on the streets and you're having to fend for yourself. Uh, and survival for a young person that's only 18 years old uh, in American society is almost impossible. Uh, in fact, uh, studies have shown that the average uh, person uh, in their development has uh, interaction with their parent or some caring, loving adult uh, until their age 26. And we're asking uh, people, or at that point, we were asking young people to transition into adulthood at age 18. And even though I aged out of the foster care system, I was fortunate to have a family connection and we were interacting and uh, they were providing me support and guidance uh, even after uh, I turned 18. Uh, they stayed in touch with me and supported me throughout my college experience. And then even after I left Indiana and moved to Michigan and uh, started my career, I would go home. Uh, that was my home to go to at Thanksgiving and Christmas and the holidays. And uh, I stayed uh, in close contact with that family until uh, actually uh, they passed away and uh, I provided the memorial services for them. And you established a home that you funded yourself to assist young people in making that transition out of foster care into adulthood and real life. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. I decided to start working with youth in foster care to provide them some support. And we founded the Center for Urban Youth and Family Development. And uh, we focused initially on just providing programming. Uh, and as we expanded our services, we expanded into semi-independent living. And we have a facility at 15827 Indiana Street that we were very fortunate to uh, be gifted from Liberty Bank. And uh, it was one of those uh, houses that they were actually going to demolish. I remember I put my wife in the car and we went by and I said, honey, this is the house that the bank gave us. And she looked at it and looked at me and said, honey, can we give it back? <laughs> Uh, but it was a um, uh, dilapidated property, but we were very fortunate to uh, qualify for and receive a grant from Maxwell House Coffee, uh, their Drops of Good program, and they did a $50,000 extreme makeover on the facility and created a wonderful, loving home environment that we now use to uh, house three young men that are tr in and transitioning out of the foster care system, and we uh, have three residents at a time. That's a great story. Thank you. And as living proof of this success, we are joined by one of your star graduates, Justin Black. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you for having me on here. I really appreciate it. So can you talk about how you came to be in foster care? Yeah, so uh, I'm originally from Detroit and I entered the foster care system at nine years old, uh, largely due to my parents' substance abuse issues and uh, my dad uh, getting in trouble with um, uh, law enforcement and uh, the legal system. So uh, from nine years old, I entered the foster care system and lived with my oldest brother as the youngest of five siblings, uh, me and my other brother, um, who is the fourth youngest. And we entered the foster care system and um, we live with family initially, but you know, things happen where you move with other people, you need to leave homes, but um, it all started at nine years old. So then how did the two of you meet? 
Yeah, so I met Mr. Arbuckle at about 13 years old, and uh, really I was just uh, applying for a job, a summer program job, and going through his program, uh, like any most young people, you know, you're really just trying to get a job, get some money over the summer, and you're not really looking to uh, have a mentor or have all this information and knowledge poured into you, but I came on a job and ideas of prior preparation prevent, prevents poor performance and to see it through poem over and over again every single day is just poured into your head over and over and you know i received so much more uh, important than money while working with mr arbuckle that you know i even to this day those ideas stick with me as a 23 year old so i uh, worked with mr arbuckle for two summers uh, when i was 13 and 14 and yeah it just so many things have changed since then. And Marcel, what's your recollection of meeting Justin? Oh, it was fun. Uh, Justin was younger than most of the kids that were in the program, so I kind of focused on him a, a little extra. And uh, we had a, a very unique program in that we wanted to teach the kids skills, uh, resiliency, substance abuse prevention, how to overcome bullying, uh, how to be a positive person. We had all these wonderful and extremely high expectations for these young people. And we were trying to figure out how can we pour all of this stuff on them and into them and it's not gonna be like school. And I said, well, what if we were paying them to participate in the program so that this activity was actually their job? And uh, that's what we did. And we had a totally different focus for the young people because most of uh, the young people were looking at manual labor type jobs when they come for a summer job. I wanna uh, clean a vacant lot, I wanna sweep the streets, I wanna do some work. And what I wanted to teach them was work with your brain. And that was a new way of looking at how to earn a living, how to earn money. And most of these young people were not accustomed to that type of environment. So we had to uh, create a new environment for them to dive into and then uh, show them a new way of utilizing their skills and their brains uh, to earn a living and to establish a career. I found that I had to almost take on the role of being a father figure uh, for many of the young people so that they would see that their life is resilient, that they have the ability to move forward and to keep going and to uh, accomplish goals. And we had very, very high expectations and we made the young people aware that uh, they had those expectations upon them and therefore they were responsible to meet them and to exceed them. Justin, can you talk about the high expectations that Mr. Arbuckle had for all of you? Yes, so we all came into this program uh, with so much trauma in our background that we really thought that we were foster youth and that consumed our identity altogether. But Mr. Arbuckle really wanted us to get outside of that way of thinking that we're simply foster youth, that that is a part of our experience and it makes us part of who we are, but it's also a part of our purpose and we have so much more to do in our lives and in, in this world that we're not just foster youth. We have so much more of our identity and characteristics that uh, we have so much more to offer into this world. And that's something that Mr. Arbuckle really worked hard to work on our way of thinking and our identity in that way. What was your experience like in that program? For me, I think this is one of the first times where I've seen a, a black man who is successful, doing great things, and who, from the foster care system, being able to overcome the barriers and circumstances that he faced, and it gave me inspiration that I'll be able to really do the same. So uh, seeing that was, uh, it really sparked the uh, light under me to let me know that I can be just as successful, even more successful, no matter my circumstances or environment. Uh, and it sticks with me to this day, where when you are prepared for your opportunity, uh, you're prepared for the circumstances and the opportunities that come towards you. You don't need to, it's not as much luck, but just preparation. And when you're prepared, you don't need to be nervous for opportunities or you don't miss out on those type of uh, uh, opportunities and things that come your way. When you're prepared, it, it really comes towards you and it happens naturally. And those are the type of ideas that Mr. Arbuckle really uh, put into our brains and, and really helped us practice on a daily basis. And uh, these things is, is just, 
uh, the the leadership and example he provided was was just phenomenal. I would say, and being able to uh, be a mentor to us really inspired me. I would say. Can you talk about how the program helped you overcome and heal from some of the trauma you had experienced earlier in life? Yes. So on the job, a lot of times we will read pieces of Mr. Arbuckle's book and just heartbreaking experiences that he went through and some of the things he went through as a child and growing up as a teenager and learning about his circumstances and even how similar some of the things he was going through. And a lot of times foster care, you feel abandoned by their family and by their parents. And we deal with that burden our entire lives and we carry that, we internalize it. And so many negative things come from that. But seeing his life and seeing how he was abandoned once, but he was able to turn his life into something positive, really let me know that because maybe if I had family members or people who were important to me in my life, maybe have turned their back on me or felt like they turned their back and given up on me. It still let me know that I have hope in life and I can still be successful and do great things. At Team Wellness Primary Care Center, you'll find all the basic services you need to be well and stay well. Come in for all your screenings. Come in for routine physicals and checkups. Come in for full service dentistry. Come in for vaccinations and immunizations. At Team Wellness Primary Care Center, we take care of your total health. Team Wellness Primary Care Center, come on in. At Team Wellness Dental Clinics, you'll find plenty to smile about. Our friendly professional dentists and hygienists are here to give you the full range of preventative and remedial care you need for a beautiful, lasting smile. From diagnostics to routine cleanings, our team does it all, right in your neighborhood. So whether you come to us or we come to you, you'll get the kind of dental care you need to keep smiling. Team Wellness Dental Clinics, now serving communities all over Metro Detroit. So in addition to the lessons and the new way of thinking, how important is a new environment? I think uh, environment is, is absolutely critical because uh, you can <clears throat> uh, change the perspective that you have on life based on the environment that you're in. And uh, providing these young people with an opportunity to be in a positive environment, even if it was just for uh, six hours a day, four days a week, uh, that the moment that they hit the door, Mr. Arbuckle was gonna be there, he's gonna have his uniform on, he's gonna be on time, he's gonna be full of energy, and he has that same expectation for me. And, and that's what I try to inflict upon them, uh, for lack of a better term, but to share that uh, different type of environment, no matter where you come from, this is what the world is going to be like now. It, it sparks so much resilience. Uh, uh, you know, the, the ideals that you put into the mind uh, are what is going to come out of it. You know, what you put in is what's gonna come out. And you've certainly put in a world of inspiration because Justin has traveled the world. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, being with Mr. Arbuckle, uh, again, it sparked the idea of what could come from my life and what I could do and kind of challenging the barriers of my life. So that's really where it started before I even knew I would eventually travel. But in my college years, I mean, I connected with my uh, wife, who is my now wife, and she encouraged me to uh, do so many uh, things. And I grew up in Detroit for 17 years. So going to college at Western Michigan was a huge leap for me. But my in, at the end of my freshman year, entering into my sophomore year, I tried my first study abroad to Seoul, South Korea, and you know, three or four years later, I've been to 30 countries and five study abroads. And again, it all started with just uh, people planting small ideas and small seeds into me, like Mr. Arbuckle, of you know, just overcoming barriers and not feeling limited by your environment and your circumstances. And who knew that you know, a kid from Detroit who uh, is growing up in Detroit for 17 to 18 years would travel to over 30 countries, you know? And so with all these experiences, I understand you have a book coming out. 
Yes, um, I've been blessed to be able to write a book with a co-written with my, my wife and who has also had experiences in the foster care system. So uh, during the pandemic, I mean, we've been able to uh, just create so many different things. And the main thing being this book called Redefining Normal, how two foster kids beat the odds and discover healing, happiness and love. And just a book about both of our experiences in the foster care system. But more than that, it's just how foster youth and anyone in general, not even just related to the foster care system, can reevaluate their their circumstances, their mindset, and the path that they've been set on, and the statistics set before them. Reevaluate those things and be aware of it and intentional about breaking through those barriers, changing your mindset and the daily practices that you deal with. Like I talk about the circumstances of uh, two generations of domestic violence on my dad's side and two generations of drug abuse on my mom's side. So those are the things that are set before me and she's had other things set before her as well. So we had to go through this process of changing our mind and reevaluating what's normal in our lives because violence and drug abuse and all these other things were normal in our life. But we had to kind of choose a new pathway and a lot of that comes with mentors of, and changing environment and really us making that decision of, I'm gonna be better than I was yesterday. Not I'm thinking one month down the line, one year down the line. I have to think about tomorrow and how can I improve my actions tomorrow. Wow, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. And Marcel, you are implementing a program in Haiti or Israel? Well, we're just investigating and taking a look at uh, the opportunities, comparing what other countries do to what we're doing and uh, looking at opportunities to possibly expand abroad. We came up with a formula, uh, character plus scholarship plus perseverance plus uplift times friendship plus love plus truth will equal the three things that everybody wants out of life, and that's peace, happiness, and prosperity. And that's the, the, the focus that we use with the program as we bombarded these young people with, with uh, sayings, uh, as, as he indicated, prior preparation prevents poor performance. And the one thing that we wanted to embark upon them more than anything else was the ability to be resilient, to keep coming back, to keep trying over and over again. So we came up with, uh, we investigated and we made them all memorize the poem, See It Through. When you're up against the trouble, meet it squarely face to face. Plant your feet, set your shoulders, lift your chin, and take a brace. And when the worst is bound to happen, in spite of all that you can do, you may fail, but you may conquer. See it through. Black may be the clouds about you, and your future may seem grim, but don't let your nerve desert you. Keep yourself from fighting trim. When it's veiled to try and stop it, do the best that you can do. Remember, running from it will not save you. See it through. Even hope may seem but futile when with troubles you are beset. But remember, you're simply facing what other men have met. So if you fail, fall, still fighting, don't give up whatever you do. Keep your eyes to the front, your head high to the finish, and... See it through. Oh, that's wonderful. What would you like to leave with our viewers today? Well, as I indicated, I think that uh, resilience is one of the key aspects of uh, <clears throat> what we try and share with the young people. And I, I reflect on uh, Nelson Mandela and how resilient he was even after uh, 27 years of captivity and <clears throat> uh, imprisonment. And I you know, think about uh, Justin's comment that it's, it's a day-to-day -day, uh, journey. And one of the things that Nelson Mandela said to himself every day was out of the night that covers me, Black is a pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever gods there be for my unconquerable soul. In the failed clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. And under the bludgeoning of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of raft and tears looms but the horror of the shade. And yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. For it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment to scroll. For I am the captain of my fate and the master of my soul. Mm. Justin, what would you like to leave with our viewers today? Yes, so what I would like to leave with viewers is just reflect on your life and those around you and just think about how your actions, your way of thinking, and your pathway all together in your journey really influences those around you. We're not just here as individuals in life, uh, just operating. There are billions of people in this world that we're all connected to. 
our thoughts and actions have so much influence over other people. So as my wife always says, we're meant to be connected and interdependent on one another. So continue to just rely on other people. And though we need a sense of independence, it's really important that we are a community, we are dependent on one another, and we work together to improve one another in all we do. Anxiety, depression, can happen to anyone for all kinds of reasons, especially during difficult and trying times that no one should have to go through alone. At Team Wellness, trained, compassionate, caring professionals will get you into the right treatment so you get better. Team Wellness, you are not alone. Thank you for joining us today as we explored the challenges and the opportunities of aging out of foster care. If you'd like to learn more about this or any mental health issue, please visit our website at MyHealthyMind.com, on Facebook at MyHealthyMind, or on Twitter. We'll see you next week for another edition of My Healthy Mind. Let's talk about it. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content from My Healthy Mind. Let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Anthony, owner of the Policello Insurance Agency. Thanks for stopping by. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the insurances and services we offer. For individuals and families, we offer health, life, dental, vision, and disability insurance from multiple carriers. We even offer health insurance plans from healthcare.gov and Medicare plans for those over 65. you own a business? If so, we offer a variety of employee benefits like health, dental, and vision coverage for businesses with as few as one employee or as large as 500. We also offer commercial coverage like general liability, workers' comp, and property insurance. The Policella Insurance Agency is an independent agency offering multiple insurance carriers, which means you do not have to call around to several different companies shopping for coverage or rates. We will give you quotes from different carriers to help you find the best price and coverage for your family or business. If you have questions about insurance for you, your family, or business, call us today for a free quote at 1-800-578-5141. Thanks for stopping by.